Welcome to Splunk Talk, 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 talk. A Splunk podcast that's Jeez. all Splunk and no junk. I am your host, Hal, and he is... I'm Birch. Wait, <laughs> you can't do that to me. It's We're getting to the end of the day. We're getting loopy, man. Right. Um, we've got some two very special guests here, Kara uh, Gillis and Martin Weiser. And before we get into them and our topic of service intelligence for SAP and IT Essentials and all the other fun things, Hal, how are you holding up? I am I'm doing pretty well. Um, I had a goal. Like, I was going to watch sessions. Goal. I did not meet that goal. No! I've been... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, y- y'all, you all know what it's like to be in Vegas and do the, you know, what, 18 hour do days or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's insane. I thought this was going to be relatively laid back. And it, it is, I mean, it is relatively speaking. Um, Some of us are in pajama pants. That's how laid back it is. <laughs> <laughs> I did not ask. I did not ask that. <laughs> and you, you know, didn't have to, you didn't it, have it's, to. It's going great. It's going great. But I didn't take in any sessions. I mean, I watched the first couple of keynotes you know, like everybody else uh, before any of the breakout sessions, but I have not. I, I, I went upstairs and I vegged and I sat vegged. next to my wife and just hung out. <laughs> oh, you brought your wife to comp this year. Very cool. Yeah. See, I, uh, I've made a little more progress on my bingo. Nice. Yes. With bingo. Uh, if you go to our Twitter account sometime, I think yesterday they posted a media package with a coloring book, <laughs> um, bingo and what I've laminated is the uh, drink recipes, the cocktails and mocktails. Wonderful. I'm going to check that out. Yes. Yes. Everyone should. Uh, made a little more progress on that. Uh, got to catch some sessions. Got to do a session. Uh, very cool experience. And now I'm here with you beautiful people. So let's hop into it. All right. Awesome. So let's first start with Kara. You're on the left. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um. Well, I like long walks on the beach. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, <laughs> uh, I've been at Splunk about four and a half years. I'm a director of product management. I focus on our IT apps portfolio. Um, I love Splunk. What other stuff? I live in San Francisco, so I was here when the orange sky was what I woke up to in the midst of fire season, which was terrifying. Um, and I don't know. I worked with all three of you pretty closely and happy to be here. Have you always been in product management at Splunk? I haven't. No, I started off in product marketing. I did a tour of duty in product marketing, I should say. It was about three years doing that. Um, And before that, um, I mean, Birch, did I really have a life before Splunk? Is there life before Splunk? I don't know. That's why I didn't even Only if you're a customer of Splunk. That's the only life that matters, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, before Splunk, um, I was a strategy consultant for a really long time. And um, when I came out of that, I I was like, well, what, do I, what am I going to do? Um, and when I went to business school, I got really interested in tech. And so I, I tried out internships in both product management and product marketing. So I knew I wanted to be close to product. I just didn't know what side uh, I wanted to be on. And I was able to do both here. So that's been really fun. I like doing that. I like jumping around at a company and understanding, you know, kind of the edges and each, you know, each job has a different mission. And Absolutely. It's cool that you were able to kind of explore those. Awesome. Well, welcome. Um, Martin, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Martin Weiser. I live in Colorado, as you can tell, based on my Rocky Mountain accent. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so do you, do you also not like long walks on the beach? Uh, well, there's not a lot of beaches around here, so <laughs> long I, like to, I do like, I guess, long walks, like cross country skiing, maybe, or mountain biking. <laughs> so that'll work. Um, and I'm in field product management and in that role, we build a lot of, uh, field solutions. Um, and you know, it's, it's a fun job because it allows us to prototype a lot of stuff without really having to see it all the way through. So it's. It's definitely it's definitely a fun gig, and, and this is actually you've done the same job the whole time you've been at Splunk Essential. I know the title changed a little bit. Because yeah, you make it sound like that's a negative thing. Like it's really it's a pretty no, cool no, role actually. <laughs> I mean, that was 
uh, before you and I were on the same team, my yes. previous title was a lot of the similar responsibilities. I, and I, it was called a solution architect at that time. And you know, then the special. Yeah, IT ops practitioner. You know, practitioner, so, yeah. yeah practitioner. There were a lot of different yeah. titles, uh, very similar roles. But at the end of the day, you know, it helps us get product out, um, test it with the customers, work on super interesting use cases, uh, also get to pick, you know, the more challenging problems. So I never have to worry about, you know, is the props the conf right or the, the transforms or whatever. So I don't have to work about the lower level details. I can focus on, you know, is this something that I'm interested in solving? So it's definitely it's, it's, it's a it's an interesting role. You don't have to finish anything. You really exactly. <laughs> pass it off to other people. Yeah. <laughs> you two are still friends despite this we are so Martin, do you hand off a, a lot of half-baked things to Kara? is that what's going on here yeah well i wouldn't say it's half-baked right so it's... okay so a quarter baked yeah <laughs> i just don't have the same process rigor that you know Kara's team has so mm. If it passes like a optimistic unit test, it's good enough for me. While as Kara has to test it, you know, from all different angles, making sure it's secure, making sure it doesn't break under any conditions. For yeah. me, it's like more of a best case scenario testing. Mm -hmm. So, but when you give it to us, it's in pretty good shape, I'd have to say. Oh, you're kind. So, Kara, <laughs> how much work is involved after the concept is proven out? After you know he's got a successful smoke test and just a little bit more. And remember, your boss is watching, so make it sound like it's a lot of work. Um, that's a good question. I think it just depends on what it is. If it's a feature um, versus like an entire new product or new app, for example, I think a you know a feature um, maybe like a quarter's worth of work. Sometimes um, it, it just depends. I, I can't say one answer, but um, in a, a more recent example, probably like a quarter's worth of work, mm -hmm. um, which is typically how we plan our development cycles. And so there's a lot of testing, a lot of, as you said, security, um, and and just making sure that there aren't bugs, uh, that which is what we call hardening, um, to make sure that it's battle tested and ready to go for you know our customers to use. Awesome. So why don't you tell us about, um, you know, and not everybody may have made it to the, the IT super session. You want to kind of start there with some of the highlights and we'll kind of dig into some of the details. And then we've got a couple different paths we can go down with the two of you as well. Um, and by the way, thank you, Ben. On average, I do one to 99% of yeah. the work. Yes, I'm very specific. <laughs> you never uh, do zero. You never do zero <laughs> or 100%. <laughs> True. It's a team effort always. Um, <laughs> The highlights I'd say are that um, we're really excited about how much closer we're getting to the observability suite of, por of portfolio products. Um, namely, our, our first major integration is the Splunk Infrastructure Monitor add-on, which brings you know events and metrics from Splunk Infrastructure Monitoring into Core Splunk so that you can um, have both your logs and metrics and events all within your passive troubleshooting dashboards that you've already built. Um, you know, we are continually uh, building on that integration. So there's definitely more to come between those two forms um, as we continue to more tightly integrate. Um, but alongside that add-on, we actually also have a content pack in IT service intelligence um, that has a lot of service templates and KPI templates that um, accelerate how you can use the data from Splunk infrastructure monitoring to end-to-end -end service monitoring and event analytics. So that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is IT essentials. We talked about in the super session, which is really um, a complement to Splunk security essentials, which was a field. Uh, so similar to what Mart, uh, Martin did um, by taking stuff from the field and then that becomes a product. Um, you know, a lot of customers have used Splunk Security Essentials to learn how to use Splunk for security. And so we wanted a companion app to that. And what we've done is we worked with some of our best sales engineers and best practitioners to curate um, about 50, I think there's like around 50 uh, searches um, across a variety of use cases that are common for our customers using Splunk for IT ops use cases. And we're basically teaching them how to use Splunk for IT. And it's now in beta. And so you can go to splunk.com slash ITE to sign up for the beta. 
Um, and we're going to get a lot of feedback on that before we make it generally available so that it's something that's really um, helpful to customers of all sizes to onboard new customers or just maybe learn stuff that you might not have uh, known that's one could do. Um, and uh, then the last one, I'm actually going to hand off to Martin because he <laughs> worked on it so much. Uh, intelligence for SAP solutions is a content pack. It's a uh, specifically for joint customers with SAP, um, which is a lot of customers. I mean, using SAP for a bunch of their, to power a bunch of their business services. Um, I'll, I'll let maybe you talk about that. Yeah, go for it. And then we'll come back to you, Kara, for, uh, you know, digging in. So we'll go back. Because yeah, who wants to hear from yeah, sure. We're just going to keep going back to Kara. <laughs> <laughs> sure, absolutely. So um, basically, you know, SAP has a ton of customers. But the thing that, you know, I didn't know is, um, when you're a SAP customer, you don't necessarily have one instance of SAP. You know, the larger customers that we deal with um, in the beta program and in the early adoption phase, you know, some of them have 150, 200 production instances of SAP. So just okay, log so into the right. Literally 150 or 200 instances? Yeah. <laughs> So just logging into the right instance is kind of a challenge, right? Like um, if you put your product into, you know, the one that has the accounting rules for Asia Pacific rather than the one for EMEA, obviously you are messing that whole thing up uh, right from the beginning. But yeah, different accounting rules, different acquisitions, different, you know, uh, you know, regulatory uh, requirements. So all kinds of different reasons. So it's really hard to manage that entire environment. And, you know, ITSI really helps out uh, monitoring and, and bringing visibility into all the different aspects of any service. But what SAP is really good at is we use what is called Power Connect to unlock SAP to get the data out of uh, the SAP environment, send it to Splunk. And SAP, just like mainframes, uh, you know, can self-describe itself. So it can say, hey, I'm running on this particular database or I'm running with these particular components. So we dynamically build out, you know, the services, the service tree, everything that is associated. So it's specific to that instance. Uh, and then because the instances are so different, you know, from a use case perspective, some may be used for ERP, some may be used for CRM, some may be used, you know, in different regions with more users. For like, other acronyms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do think of... Does anybody know what SAP stands for? Yeah. Quick, go. Um, S is uh, Spanish Application Fail. Processing. Failed. It's a German company. So. I know yeah. it's a German company, SAP AG. That is, that's all I know. But that's not yeah. important. HE just anyway, Martin, you were saying something. You were on the, the legit part. important to a lot of businesses, yeah. and it's complicated to get... Oh, I thought that guy. Systems, applications, and products, and data processing. I believe that's what the full name is. Oh, Sorry. Right. Way, to, way to Google. See, I didn't, know, right? didn't know that either, so definitely learn something. Everybody learned something. something new today. <laughs> Compliments to Jeeves. <laughs> Did you ask Jeeves, actually? Did you know that Laura Snow, who is one of the best technical marketers I've ever worked with, used to work at Ask Jeeves? Shout out to you, Laura. To, did not know. <laughs> we'll have to ask Laura <laughs> about Ask Jeeves. Martin, you were uh, you were saying something more interesting? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure if it's more interesting, but at the same time, you know, if you have that many instances, setting thresholds and all that stuff is like super complicated, right? Because you have that many systems, you don't necessarily know as an administrator, like, you know, is this a widely used system? Is this a system that barely has any users? So we put in a lot of machine learning, a lot of those, uh, you know, concepts that are, uh, are widely used in ITSI to help a lot with the administration. So it has been a really good experience on both ends, right? On the one hand, as if the, the content pack gets a lot of the benefits, but on the other hand, we, we found some shortcomings uh, in the ITSI machine learning capabilities, which then got incorporated into the most recent release. So uh, there, there's definitely both sides that, uh, that learn from that. So, okay, so if someone, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, we've dropped a number of like cool offerings. We've got, see, Martin thinks I'm going to make a joke already. Um, we're, we've dropped, we dropped like, okay, about we got dropping the kids off at the pool. Is that, is that no, the no, 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 none of that crap. Okay. Um, we're talking about, uh, it essentials, the surface intelligence for SAP solutions. I think Kara mentioned another content pack. On for, for IT... monitoring add on and content pack for, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where can we get all these? So we talked about IT Essentials. We we uh, we put the URL in there. Splunk.com. And, and some are free, and ITD. some are products. Right, and I, I think yeah. Where where can we get them all? 
No, that's, um, that's a horrible question. Hold on. Wait a second. Wait a yeah, second. Go ahead. Let, me, let me back that up for a second. Yeah. IT Essentials yeah. will be a free app. Is that correct? Yes. For, for enterprise. It will be. It is currently in beta. So right. you can sign the beta in the chat or in the yeah. comments, I believe. Link. Put that. The Splunk infrastructure monitoring add-on, you can get on Splunk base today. OK, awesome. Um, to unify the two products. And the content pack, I believe, is hosted on Docs. Um, for Splunk infrastructure monitoring, and then for the SAP solutions content pack, Martin. Yep, you all get that on Splunk base. So basically, you get most of it on Splunk base. All all of the you know components that Kara mentioned. Um, the SAP solution is currently in what's called limited availability release. So uh, it's not available necessarily to everyone uh, to play around with that. But if you talk to your sales rep, um, there's definitely a potential to get into the inner circle. So yes. I want to take a question of confusion, potential confusion and just hit it head on. What about the Splunk app for infrastructure? What about the infrastructure were used in some other similar apps and add-ons and, and we have operating system, you know, focused things, you know, help us kind of, what is the, the vision of the company here? The vision of the company. Well, did you have one of the forward slides available? <laughs> Legal. <laughs> um, we you know there's definitely a lot more to come there. I recognize that having infrastructure in so many names of our products can get confusing. But what we're doing, you know, we we built app for infrastructure in a world where we had not yet acquired Signal Effects. You know, uh, Signal <laughs> Effects um, now, you know, part of the Splunk family um, in every way, including naming, um, is really an incredible monitoring platform. You know, real-time streaming metrics is just, you know, a huge differentiator market. Um, and so really migrating a lot of our metrics workloads for customers that are looking for a cloud native solution to Splunk infrastructure monitoring to Splunk APM is really um, going to be hugely beneficial for those customers. Um, we still have the Splunk app for infrastructure. Um, available to customers to bring metrics through metrics TAs into or through, um, you know, the curated on uh, data onboarding flows that are within the Splunk app for infrastructure for AWS, Windows servers, as well as Linux and Unix. Um, but I think in the future, you'll see more and more integrations with Splunk infrastructure monitoring and Splunk core and ITSI to show truly how we can leverage those differentiated capabilities. Um, of both platforms and then um, make them look and feel, um, you know, similar in design system, in workflows. So I think just from a product perspective, we want to we want to more tightly integrate um, as much as possible in workflows that make sense to our customers. And, and I imagine this is probably one of the harder things to do, which is to say, we've got a lot of ideas, a lot of innovation a couple of different platforms and ways to accomplish things and you have to make it all fit and it it's not a simple thing to do it's going to take time yeah it'll take time i mean it, we only acquired um signal i believe right before yeah, last comp, comp 19. Yeah. um and the fact that we've been able to integrate so quickly so, you know just in a year's time is really amazing i mean we integrated omniscient and signal effects apm products uh, earlier this year, um, and they had only, I think, six within six months, maybe. Um, and the add-on uh, and all of the roadmap items that I can't really talk about yet are just really exciting um, across uh, both platforms. Just to the, the what the new world will look like at next comp is just really exciting. And uh, but yes, of course, it takes time, um, but we're doing it at a pace that I'm really proud of. I have to say. That's so awesome. yeah, I mean a year, a year though in the tech world, it's like dog years. It's like seven years. I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> just joking aside, I, I think I think I found um, the solution for SAP and the content packs, and so I put the links in in the chat there as well. So anyone watching the replay looking to get the hookup, um, Kara and Martin will keep keep us honest if those are the wrong links or not. Let, let's um, switch. I want some comments. A little bit. Maybe I can address. I think the. Bearded Fox DM just asked, you know, how what does it look like going from Splunk Infrastructure Essentials? It's actually called Splunk IT Essentials, just in case you're looking for it online. Upgrading to ITSI, still fighting the budget. So, you know, 
Um, IT, Splunk IT Essentials is, is focused on core use cases. So it's anything you can do core, um, we're trying to curate that for you. But we are actually looking for, we are, we are working on how to integrate IT Essentials into IT, uh, you know, we are looking to more closely integrate also IT Essentials to ITSI so that um, that upgrade experience feels seamless, feels natural. So there's more to come there for sure. But think of Essentials as like another app that you can use on core today. And then ITSI would be um, you know, that. Well, maybe that we should app. have Martin talk about that. I mean, I know he's had yeah. a lot of hands on experience with it. Martin, you kind of want to, like, why would somebody start to think about ITSI? Well, you know, ITSI is awesome from a real-time monitoring perspective, right? So let's say you onboard the data, you get the data in, you use the IT Essentials component to write some basic searches and some dashboards. A lot of this is on demand, right? And you can obviously put alerts around that. But if you really want to see historical trends, if you really want to pull in the data correlated across different data sources and things like those, then ITSI is the next logical step up. So at that point in time, you know, you get the data, you pull it in, you store the metadata in summary indexes. You always have the raw data available, but the representation, everything is, is much, much quicker. Uh, also, the learning curve from building out custom dashboards versus, you know, doing it through glass tables. There's a lot of uh, benefits, you know, from, from that perspective or used to be if you're not familiar with the new you know glass table uh, glass table framework yet so th those are all you know logical steps why you would do that the other area that's you know really advanced on the uh, ITSI side and we touched on this a little bit was the whole machine learning aspect so there's anomaly detection that's trending there's anomaly detection that's a, uh, cohesive so if I have one server behaving badly in a group of five servers it, it, it identifies that automatically if all five servers after a code push work differently I'm able to identify that I have adaptive thresholding right you have the similar you have similar capabilities integrating for example IT essentials with the uh, with the machine learning toolkit but you know that's much more work uh, and and much more heavy lifting for the administrators to get to similar outcomes one so, server talk, behaving um, badly that's the name of Martin's first album <laughs> <laughs> oh my god Martin Martin I'd love to hear you sing that would be incredible yeah I'm not sure that's in the cards <laughs> well good thing we've got a platform for him to do it Martin take us away <laughs> take us away hold on I've got some symbols <laughs> And a kazoo. A kazoo. Did anybody Hell, watch I think the you had uh, Dungeons and Data Masters stream with Felicia Day? Oh, I love Felicia Day. I know. She's awesome. You missed it. Do you know what she was also on? Was, um, do you guys watch Nailed It? Yes. That's like the best baking show on earth. <laughs> and she was a guest judge. I, I don't think I saw that one, which surprises me because we watched that one. That's one of the shows that I sometimes watch the, with the little kids. Uh, as, as it's so good. Thing. It's Love it. Good is, it's one of those bad good things to me. It's horrible. You're watching a train wreck of people who <laughs> cannot fake at so, all. So Nicole Breyer is one of my favorite comedians, and she's yeah, just she's, she's, fantastic and has an incredible podcast for those of you who are did not know that. interested. Thank oh, you. yeah. I did not know that. So, so we're on topic. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what would you like to talk about, Birch? I could go. I could ask you another hard question if you want, Kara. <laughs> Why do I get all the hard questions? Because <laughs> okay. Martin is already wiser. <laughs> I oh, no. answer, and it won't. All be right. It's, it's, we could do game I show know, style. Ask really it to both and see who answers first. <laughs> How? What's your other question? Okay. I'll see if I can answer. I have, I have two places to put metrics. Mm. That's where do I put my metrics? <laughs> I'm going to go back to my previous answer. Um, you know, Splunk infrastructure monitoring is a SaaS platform. It's it's only deployed in cloud, right? Mm -hmm. So I think most companies are on this cloud journey. They are adopting cloud more and more. Um, SaaS is becoming ubiquitous. Um, I think maybe five years ago. Maybe there was some hesitation to adopt SaaS platforms at scale, uh, especially in highly regulated industries. But I don't think that's the case anymore. Um, but for any, you know, there are some differentiating capabilities from, you know, Splunk infrastructure monitoring from Splunk APM that I think are worthy of adopting over putting metrics in Splunk Core. 
I do. Um, I think that is the future. Um, that is where we'll have a unified metrics uh, platform to take advantage of. Of course, we still, you know, but we can also bring those metrics from those platforms into Splunk Core um, and ITSI to unify uh, those metrics and events with all of these other types of data formats, um, with all your logs, with all like, and also there are things that Splunk ingests that are not yet covered, although Splunk Insertion Monitoring does cover a lot of on-prem and cloud uh, data sources, but there are certain things that you might want to correlate that data or search that data with, you know, that you've already put into Splunk. So um, I'd say the future is really in Splunk Infrastructure Monitoring, in Splunk APM for metrics. We, mm -hmm. we, we still have a metric store um, to accommodate the the breadth of our customers. I mean, the I'm observability rip that feature out of the core product. I mean, no, our observability, you know, the observability super session, um, you know, talked a little bit about, uh, you know, where they're going, but it really showed one of the most powerful things I think is like the types of customers where you have customers that are really on premises still, um, you know, managing data centers to customers that are, there's one customer of ours that is 95% serverless um, in Latin America. And that co company I think has been around for three years. So there's such a wide array of customer environments that we support. And so we want to enable those customers to be successful where they are, meeting our customers where they are. But the future and the differentiated capabilities that are specifically designed for metrics monitoring are really going to be in that cloud native platform. I just want to thank you for pronouncing it on premises. Oh, yes. A premise is a um, is like a uh, a topic, not yeah. uh, a way a, a, a way to deploy. Um, so I should infrastructure. <laughs> so I should I should say that we're off premise right now. We uh, because yeah. of how because of me this time. Yeah. I can bring up the cold buyer again if you want me to, Birch. I'm happy let's, to. Let's go back there. to to um, Felicia Day work uh, v versus Felicia Night work. Anyway, um, we uh, we are coming up on our, our time here. Um, I always like to see, our, I, I'm pretty sure I saw at least one of your names in some sessions this week, these two days. Um, and the cool thing is we don't really have to worry about if you already did your session because we can catch the replay immediately. So anything that you'd like to promote um, and how it may or may not relate to the things we talked about. Martin, you go first. I wanted to I'll make sure first. there was a nice, a nice pregnant pause. Dead air is apparently really good for broadcasts. Really good. <laughs> I figured. So, well, the session that I would like to promote is um, the you know SAP session because it does give um, a good introduction into how other customers are monitoring SAP, but also a little bit more value, like what business processes are, are they monitoring. So if you if you search for Ram Gola, G-O-L-L-A, or Warwick Chai C H A I. Um, basically, the the session will pop up, um, and it's it's a really good introduction if you do want to monitor your SAP environments. All right. Um, awesome. I was in the super session for IT Ops, and that happened this morning. And then I did an IT Essentials super uh, session with uh, Raul Mehta on my team, which was great. Uh, so definitely check it out or in the App Showcase for a demo. Um, I'm, I was also in a um, uh, a session with Z Diao, who is my counterpart on the Splunk infrastructure monitoring side, where we talk about that integration. Um, and there's two sessions around that, so check out a Signal Effects and Splunk Better Together for more of the ITSI Splunk core side of it. And then you can check out Splunk or Stop, Investigate, and Listen. Splunk is back, brand new edition. Or should we get <laughs> some singing? There's a little bit. Actually, I do I do a little like ice ice baby uh, intro. So you can check that out. Those are two sessions that I'd love to promote. And also there's a logs troubleshooting um, session that Subu, uh, S-U-B-U, if you search for his name, um, did I think today as well that um, is really awesome. Excellent. So cool. 
with that, we need to say goodbye to our guest, but we want to tell people don't go far. There's a lot more to come uh, on this stream. Um, let's see. We are personally, Birch and I, we're going to be uh, back with you at, what is that, uh, hour and 15 or so. Um, we'll be with Ben Derringer and Sarah Mills. They help run a little bit of this show called Conf. That'll be fun. Uh, and that's think, after um, Gwen Stefani, Gwen Stefani opens, for opens for us. Yeah. 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 So this will be after Gwen opens for us. That'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else is going on? Is the Dungeons and Dragons uh, as well as the Bot and Bots yes. awards on this, yeah, so on this channel? There's a lot happening in the stream tonight, so don't go yes. far. Same bat uh, time. Actually, yeah. different bat time. Same different bat channel. <laughs> right. Thank you, Kara. Thank you, Martin. Really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.